This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The fireball hovered above the railing as the serene waters flew north over the forked sea, clouds and blue sky visible through the meager flames. Jackstor Friedar, mage apprentice, cartography student, and surrogate dragonfather, scowled. His fireball was so... wimpy. When Rivlin, Malik, and other powerful mages conjured fireballs, they were huge, dense, and brilliant, like spinning suns that could hurtle through the air to blast into enemies and incinerate them. And there's the problem, Jack muttered, having no desire to incinerate human beings or any other intelligent creature. The first time he'd managed to conjure fire had been on Nargnoth, where hordes of deadly insects had descended on his dragonling charge and the rest of the party. He hadn't minded incinerating bugs. Are you focusing? Lord Malak, Zadar weapons master, mage, and loyal servant to King Uthari, stood beside Jack with his hands clasped behind his back as he alternately advised and watched the sky ahead for threats, for dragon threats. Jack reminded himself that he needed to master this and whatever other attacks Malik taught him. Their world had been invaded by more than forty brown and gray mottled dragons that wanted to enslave or slay all of humankind. This wasn't the time to be squeamish. On my wandering thoughts, moral crises, and the impending doom our world is facing as we speak. Jack pushed his hat down against a gust of wind. Yes, I am. Assiduously so. Malik slanted a sidelong look at him, the sea breeze riffling through his short black hair and tugging at his trousers and jacket. Aren't you a little young to have moral crises? No. At eighteen, when Jack had been immersed in his cartography studies at the university, laughing with friends and awkwardly flirting with girls, he'd felt young. The adventures of the last few months seemed to have aged him ten years. I'm morally mature for my age. Hmm. Clangs came from the maid ship sailing to their port side, the Star Flyer. The deck was busy with mercenaries practicing with swords, as if such weapons would be sufficient against dragons. Fortunately, two members of Thorn Company, Tinder and Tezzy, had dragon steel axes that could cut through magic and otherwise impervious dragon scales. They could also cut through practice swords, as evinced by their scowling sparring opponents, with broken blades littered at their feet. The ship's captain, Ziva Rivlin, stood in the forecastle, her red uniform bright in the morning sun, her dark hair swept back in a bun. Her stance was similar to Malik's as she surveyed the sea a thousand feet below, as well as the other maid ships in their fleet. All twelve vessels were flying in a cluster northward as fast as possible, returning to Agerval to defend their homeland from the world's newly arrived enemies. Rivlin looked at Jack, her features elegant and beautiful despite their aloof coolness, and quirked an eyebrow as she glanced at the vestiges of his meager fireball. Embarrassed now that he knew she'd been watching, Jack gripped the railing and turned his focus back to the task. As he so often did when calling upon his magic, he envisioned a map filled with familiar terrain features. He placed a forest in the center of it and imagined lightning from a storm striking a treetop. It started a wildfire that raged across the land, destroying all the foliage in its path as it charred the earth, but it also acted as part of the natural cycle, creating fertile soil and offering an opportunity for buried seeds to sprout and grow with competing trees no longer blocking the sun's nourishing rays. His fireball grew larger and larger, his cheeks now flaming from its heat rather than embarrassment, and he stepped back. He raised his arms as he willed it to rise in the air so the fire wouldn't char the railing or hull of the ship, and so Rivlin would be able to see its magnificence from her perch a hundred feet away.